on the docket, a little public service. Tonight's meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals is being recorded for RCTV Live, uh, Comcast Channel 2 or Verizon 30, Channel 33. The videographer for tonight's meeting is Rob. Check rctv.org for more information and for replay times. All right, I'll go ahead and read the uh, hearing notice. The Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Wednesday, November 15, 2017, at 7 p.m. on the application of Kevin Keeler of Brady Sunrooms on behalf of Stephen DeBellis, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 10, for a variance under Reading Zoning Bylaw, Section 6.3, to construct a 13 by 13 and a half foot sunroom with a proposed rear yard setback of 7.2 feet and to exceed the lot coverage permitted in an aquifer protection district under section 10331 paragraph I on the property located at 170 Franklin Street in Reading, Massachusetts. Uh, unless there's an objection, I'll dispense with the reading of the abutters li list, uh, except to say that the abutters were notified as were the appropriate boards and commissions in town members and associate members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of surrounding communities. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath, so if you're gonna speak on this case, even as a member of the public, please stand and raise your right hand. <laughs> I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Your response is I do. I do. I do. Okay, the floor is yours. All right, well, first I want to apologize because I didn't realize we were the only ones on the agenda. So I, when I found that out yesterday, I felt really bad about bringing everybody out here on a cold <laughs> night for, for one hearing. I'm not used to that. Um, so uh, my name is Kevin Keeler. I'm the chief designer for Brady Built Sunroom. And um, we were hired by uh, Stephen and, and Lucy uh, to build a sunroom uh, for their son. Um, we uh, took a look at the, they had a mortgage certification plan. And if you can see from the picture of the backyard here that's in your packet, um, we had assumed that the yard was a whole lot larger than it actually is. Um, and so we didn't think there would be any issue with getting the permit. We, we knew that there was a 20 yard setback. And, um, and so we started forward with the design process and actually started building the room and during the building permit process, our rooms are built at our factory under controlled circumstances and then set with a crane. Um, so during the building permit process, the building inspector had requested a new uh, certified plot plan. And when the new certified plot plan came back, we all had the shock of our life um, because the backyard is a fraction of what it is uh, there right now. Um, and not only that, but uh, the house is in a, in a non-conforming situation, which nobody had in our wild streams thought that was the case. Um, so they want to uh, build a uh, 13 by 13 six uh, sunroom for their son. They have a four-year-old son who has a severe form of nonverbal autism and requires um, constant care. Um, two full-time teachers come in. They have some sizable pieces of equipment to come in. And there really isn't any room in the house uh, to do it, uh, especially at the age that he's at right now. Um, uh, um, the bed, his bedroom's only six feet by 12 feet, and the kitchen is very small. The living room is very small. And so the idea was to create a, a space that seemed like it was outdoors um, because he can't be uh, uh, left outside on, on uh by himself, uh, and all, so he would feel like he's outdoors, and also the space for the equipment for his, his learning and for the teachers. Um, and so the other uh, objection of, of objective was to put it in an area that would be private, and that's the reason why they chose the back of the house, because if you see from the, that same picture um, that there's no neighbors visible at all. So there's a lot of, of conservation land behind there and wetlands area. Uh, or I mean, uh, open open forest area, um, and so uh, we tried to come up with a way at, at all of putting it on the house to achieve that that didn't require a variance, and also um, uh, you know basically looked at every conceivable possibility. As you can see from the other picture in your packet from the front of the house right here, 
Um, the, the lot slopes away sharply and there's a visible ledge um, in the front yard and in the side, right here and right here. And that's the reason why the house has been located in the far back right corner of the lot. Um, so putting it on the front isn't really going to work because this ledge right here, the lot slopes away. And they also rarely have the front entryway and the, and the walkway there, and it completely defeats the purpose of privacy because it's um, the second uh, uh, um, uh, option on the right hand side isn't going to work because no matter where you put it, it's going to require variance anyway. Um, it's still going to be visible from the road. Um, the the left hand side right here, um, in order to keep it from being non-conforming, you have to push it closer to the front of the house, and the more you push it towards the front of the house, the more the lot slopes away, and also there's ledge visible in this area right here as well, which makes it a lot more difficult. Um, so the only logical place to put it is on in the back side of the house right here, and where it's tucked away around the corner, it won't be visible uh, from anybody at all in the backyard. Um, it's, there's a flat level spot right there, which you can see in another picture right here. Um, which is, is, a, is a, a great, um, very easy spot to locate the, the house. That area has been excavated uh, in the past. There's a bulkhead there and things like that, so we know there's no ledge there in that area. And um, we have letters from both uh, neighbors, uh, which I can pass out to you, um, that are in. Uh, that are I've been shown the plans and explained everything, and they're 100% in favor of it. Um, they don't have any problem at all, and, and also, in fact, uh, state in the letter that, that this is a logical spot for it because it won't be in view of the neighbors. Um, and so, we would respectfully request a... Oh, one, one copy. Oh, that's all right. Sorry. No problem. Um, so what we, what we would uh, respectfully request is a variance of 12.8 feet from the rear yard setback um, to allow them to uh, build, uh, have the sunroom installed. Bear with me for a second. Let me just get through these. No problem. Okay. Uh, your uh, application tonight is for a, a variance with regard to the rear yard setback, correct? Correct. correct. The hearing notice seems to also advise that you've asked for a variance from the requirements of being in the aquifer protection district? Okay, I did not ask for that variance. Okay. And uh, the reason why is because we are already had a, a, a drainage engineering plan done um, that will meet that requirement. And the building inspector had told me that he felt that that would be a variance that you would not grant. And so he recommended going with a uh, uh, the the uh, engineering recharge system into the into the aquifer. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure um, because the, the unless you want to grant that in the, he which case the hearing, <laughs> your, your instincts were were right to follow the instructions of the building inspector. Absolutely. He's been uh, very helpful. And and so. Um, okay. So your 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 request is for a variance from. Uh, the rear yard setback requirements of, of 20 feet. Correct. Uh, you have uh, typically what we'll next do is we're going to read uh, the building inspector's me recent memo into the into the record, and then we would open up the um, the hearing to, to board comment. Um, is, is are you Mr. Debellis? Oh, okay, great. Well, thank you for coming before us tonight. We appreciate your application and what you're trying to do. Uh, what I think I'd like to ask, however, is you have um, discussed a bit about what your <coughs> plan is and what you're trying to do and, and why you're trying to do it, where you're trying to locate it. Um, what I think I'd like to hear from you is, on the record, go over the statutory criteria for granting uh, a variance so Absolutely. that the board can be aware no problem. Uh, in addition to what's in our packet. 
Yeah, please. Absolutely. Sure. So, um, uh, as stated before, um, the, the, there's an unusual condition on the lot um, uh, because the, the, the front yard slopes away dramatically from the front of the house, and there's visible ledge in this area and in this area, which isn't really a condition that is uh, it's noticeable in any other lots in the neighborhood. And so that's the reason why the house was located, pushed back when it was built into the back far rear corner. And the reason why it can't be located here and here is because of the slope of the lot and because of the ledge. And it can't be located on the right hand side because it would have required a variance anyway. So this isn't going to achieve the privacy that they're looking for, this variance would. Okay. Uh, so that seems to me to indicate that you've discussed what I would consider the first criteria, which is uh, circumstances owing to the unique shape or uh, topography of the land. Absolutely. Uh, there are, depending upon how you read the statute, th uh, three, two or three additional criteria uh, that are raised both in your in your application uh, and required by statute. And I'd like to. I'd like to hear hear from you on those as well. Um, you know how how literal enforcement of the zoning ordinance uh, bylaw uh, would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to um, the Debellis family. Yep. Um, and how this board might grant the relief you're seeking without a substantial detriment to the public good, or without substantially derogating from the purpose and intent. Of the zoning bylaw regarding the, uh, the the 20 foot rear yard setback. Okay, sure. So uh, the the first um, granting uh, not granting the variance would create a substantial <coughs> hardship to them based on the fact that they are are trying to um, do this room in a private location on the house for their son who has severe autism and. It, it's really the only logical place to be able to do that, and so in, in my opinion, and maybe it's just my opinion, that's kind of the definition of a hardship in, my, in, in all the years that I've been doing this. Um, and then the second, uh, to, to address the second part of that is, is that um, granting the variance I don't think would uh, detract from the spirit or intent of the zoning bylaw because it is on the rear of the house. It's not in view of any of the neighbors whatsoever. It's not going to affect the value of any of the neighbor's property. And, uh, and they're 100% favor. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, tell us a little bit about how far along you are with the town engineer and the recharge system. Um, we can have that finished in about a week. Okay. So you have we an approved that. design? No, we have not had a proof sign. We've started the design. The building inspector said, hold off on everything until you go to the zoning board. Um, Makes sense. I would do the same thing. Yeah, and so we did. We put the brakes on it, and but the engineer is ready to finish it and submit it, and we don't think there will be any problems with it. Okay. All right, before we open up the, um, the case to public comment, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, Read a memo from the building inspector into the record. Yeah, you can, you can put that down. <laughs> you make a great sign holder, though. I'll do that. Uh, it's dated uh, today, November 15, uh, 2017. Uh, it's regarding case 171217 Franklin Street. Uh, this proposal is to construct a one-story structure sunroom to a non-conforming single family to the rear of the existing single family dwelling. The proposed 13 by 13 and a half foot structure is to be located 7.2 feet from the rear property line. The required rear yard setback in an S20 district is 20 feet. A variance from section 6.0 is required. Also, this property is located in, in an aquifer, o AQ, aquifer overlay district and must comply with section 1033 paragraph I. Uh, and then it goes on to um, uh, quote from paragraph I with regard to the requirements that you have to meet with regard to the exceeding 2,500 or 15 percent of the yep. uh, uh, Lot located the entire properties in the aquifer protection district, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and so, uh, signed Glenn Redmond, 
um, zoning officer town of Reading. So that's been made part of the record. Uh, next, what I think I'd like to do is open up the case to any comments from board members. Uh, and so we'll start with uh, with Robert. Well, oh, thank you, thank you, David. <clears throat> uh, taking a look at the property, and we've done did take a look at it. Uh, <coughs> And looking at the tax assessor's uh, records, it appears that the home was built about 1953 or so. Uh, things weren't maybe as tight back then. I don't know what the zoning requirements were when the house was built uh, on, on that. So who knows in regards to the rear setback back in 53. I, I really couldn't tell you. Uh, it appears to be a legal non-conforming lot in that the lot was laid out uh, prior to the uh, existing bylaws, uh, and uh, there's conservation land to the rear of it. No, no residential properties at all. I think it's town forest, actually. It and and yeah, you know, well, it swings around too, and it's actually what to the uh, would be to the south and to the the the, the, the west. Uh, conservation land swings around, and so on two sides. The property they have conservation land uh, on there. Uh, personally, I, I, f I felt the arguments were uh, valid in regards to uh, the criteria for a variance. Uh, it did appear that uh, you know there were ledge outcroppings there, uh, severe topography in regards to the sloping of the land. I could see why they built it in 1953. Uh, you know where they did uh, to get it away, so they didn't have to do a lot of earthwork and maybe blasting, etc., things such as that. Uh, it wouldn't appear to me, uh, looking at it, uh, you wouldn't see it from the street. It doesn't appear you'd see it too clearly from any abutting properties at all. So I, I would not suspect it would be uh, any more detrimental to the neighborhood than what's uh, already there in existing conditions uh, on that. I would think they would meet the four criteria for a uh, variance on that. One question I do have is in regards to the lot coverage. Uh, you are going, uh, you say, to put in a groundwater recharge system. How much over the 15% uh, maximum allowed? Are you over? I didn't. See, did I see that on I the drive? I don't have that piece of information uh, yeah. available tonight, to be honest with you. Okay. And I don't have that off the top of my head. Yeah, I think it was in our. Uh, I, I, I in don't our, recall seeing it, but I might have missed yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. In a. Well, right in a, here, the total is 50, uh, 35, 46. Right. That's good. So, 50 percent more. And so you'd be at okay. uh, the allowable lot coverage where he's. 3546, the allowable lot coverage. I'm taking this from Glenn's uh, okay. October 10th memo. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, October 17th memo is uh, the allowable uh, square footage if you multiply the 15,468 square feet by the 15% uh, is 22,320 square feet. So they're about uh, let's call it 1,200 yeah, uh, square, 1200 feet square feet over without okay. doing the math because so, if I run out of fingers and toes, I'm in big trouble. So, yeah. yeah. So, it's a substantial amount. Substantial yeah. amount. It is. Okay. Uh, uh, but obviously, that's something your uh, engineer is going to need to know uh, how much he's over because that's how he will size the system for yeah, it. Right? He, he's yeah. already been involved and already yeah. started it. Sure. And that's, that's pretty much the way I see it, David, okay. right now. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Robert. Nick. Thanks, David. Uh, I pretty much echo everything previous board members said, and I just want to add, I mean, to the extent that this board could uh, grant relief to something I view, in my opinion, as a reasonable accommodation almost. So this is an accessibility issue um, that also, in my opinion, I think meets the four criteria, especially with the shape, topography, the financial hardship I see as being evident. I don't see any detriment to the public good, especially with uh, con uh, the town forest in the back. And um, I don't see it, you know, degrading from the intent of the zoning. So I, I, I would support this. Great. Thanks, Nick. John. Uh, <clears throat> doing a little research on it also, I, I discovered that uh, the owner of the 11-acre uh, parcel behind it, which is listed as Forest um, 
right now, uh, apparently until the year 2024, um, passed on this this uh, particular lot, um, and it was sold in apparently. Um, what was it? Uh, 53 years old, so uh, 1953, um, and the small house was put on it. There is a small house in that forest area, which I, when I went down the little road to look at it, looks like it's a duplicate of this. Interesting. Except it that. is instead of a, I think a one car garage instead of a two car garage. Hmm. But um, Back in the 50s, I think, as you had mentioned, and I think it's probably correct, uh, this was built on a mortgage survey plan. Yeah. And because it was attached to a very large piece of property, nobody was concerned that the one owner owned both properties when it was then conveyed in 53 and then moved on to the Bellises, I think, in uh, 71. Uh, we've only been there since 2006. 2006. Oh, I'm sorry. It was a, there was an individual who was there in '71. You bought it from them. Uh, that was um, Kevin Scott, I think it was. Correct. Okay. So I I think that uh, the intent was <laughs> that it was a legal legal lot at the time, and they just missed um, the side setback, um, which would be the um, Westerly side of the property, uh, with a uh, right in the garages. Yeah, um, and apparently the garage was added on um, right. later. So my point was, it, it looks like it was a intended to be a legal lot. I don't think that there's any anything um, intentional that was done here. In looking at the size of the of the um, the house to begin with, I see it's a two bedroom home, um, and the one bedroom that your son is in is a six by twelve, mm -hmm. which is smaller than a lot of closets today that are in these larger homes that were being built in Reading. So I can understand that. <clears throat> the utilization of the of the property of the house for anybody, whether it's you or somebody else, is that it just doesn't fit families today, especially in the Reading area. So, by asking for a variance, whether it's you or someone else, um, utilization of the of the property and of the structure, without going wild, um, is not without uh, reasonability. So. In your discussion of the four criteria, um, I would also support that um, because I think that there's justification all the way along the line. Thank you. Great. Thanks, John. Uh, I think what he means, too, as well, is if you're in the house in 2024, when the ownership reverts back to an individual property owner rather than the town, if you're still around in 2024 and still own the house in 2024, it might be good to put it on the back burner and maybe have a conversation with your neighbor about whether or not they need all that land back there behind your house. Interesting uh, idea. In which case, the you know, the relief you're asking for today would then be probably not needed, not necessarily. Booked. It would be there if it's granted, but. You know, you might be able to add the land such that it doesn't encroach. It allows uh, you more flexibility down the line, too. Yeah, just, yeah. If you're still thinking about it in 2024, make a note of it. <laughs> Sai. I think the case has been made by the other three members who have spoken, and I don't have anything to add to that. All right. Great. Thank you. Eric. Welcome to add. All right. Great. Thank you. Uh, as part of the process, next part of the process would be a public comment uh, opportunity, and as part of that, I'll read into the record uh, the letters that you handed up. First is dated November 3rd from uh, Nestor Iliadis, 
uh, at 162 Franklin Street, Reading. I'm a current resident at 162 Franklin Street, Reading. The purpose of this letter is, is to provide my acknowledgement and approval of the construction project and scope of work being performed or being requested at the neighboring <coughs> home, 170 Franklin Street, Reading, Mass. Please let me know if there are any questions or further information is requested. Next is dated November 12, 2017. Dear people, we are writing on behalf of our neighbor, Stephen DeBellis, at 170 Franklin Street. We live at 182 Franklin Street, next to Mr. DeBellis. His proposal to add a small addition to his house is fine with us. His house is set back off Franklin Street on top of a rise and can barely be seen. The addition will be behind his house and will not be visible from our property. We have no objection with this project. Uh, Thomas and Martha Gardner. And again, they're at uh, 182 Franklin Street. Uh, that said, is there any member uh, here present that wishes to speak on behalf of this application? Okay, hearing none, we'll close the public portion of the, uh, of the hearing. Uh, file. Uh, you have submitted with your application uh, Jack Sullivan's plot plan and what looked to be one, two, three, four construction drawings, correct? That's, That's it. Accurate. Okay. Sure. Um, uh, I think that uh, you know your application is well received and has been well received. Uh, this board historically has been uh, very cautious in uh, granting uh, a variance to any applicant uh, and uh, meeting the statutory criteria is uh, a really tough uh, hill to climb. Uh, but as my fellow board members have said, and I will echo it, I, I believe that you have met them. Um, and uh, I can't think of a, of a better situation where this relief would be uh, more suitable. Um, that said, is there anything else uh, board members would like to say um, in respect to this application? Uh, David, just, just, just a point here, and, and as they pointed out, everybody for a long time since they purchased the property sector was going by these mortgage surveys. Yeah, you can't though. And yeah. you know, we're so grateful that now we require these certified plot plans. I, I couldn't imagine dealing with a mortgage survey and seeing everything is all right, and then finding out down the road that no, that it wasn't all right. So, just wanted to make the comment that uh, we we are grateful to have a uh, certified plot plan with all these applications. Yes. Well, issues with mortgage plot plans arise <laughs> more than you would like to think they do. Right. Uh, Usually not this severe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, with that said, uh, if there's no further board comment, I would entertain a motion. The uh, members voting on uh, this application will be uh, Eric Sy, myself, John, and Robert. Uh, we need five, and so um, Nick, Nick as an associate will not. Uh, so I would then entertain a motion uh, from a board member. Uh, any volunteers? I'll do it. You will, sign. Thank you. I would move to grant the petitioner, uh, Kevin Kite Keeler of Brady Sunrooms, on behalf of Stephen DeBellis, a variance under Reading Zoning Bylaw Section 6.3 to construct a 13 foot by 13.5 foot sunroom with a proposed rear yard setback of 7.2 feet. On the property located at 170 Franklin Street in Reading, Massachusetts, as shown on the plot plan of land dated 6 October 2017, prepared and certified by John D. Sullivan III, PE, PO Box, 2004 Woburn, Mass. And uh, uh, Brady built sunroom drawings and closed with the application. I know there's several, and each one of them seems to have a different date on it, so I'm going to say enclosed with the application. I appreciate it. Make it simple. Uh, 
I don't know whether we want to add a condition on this thing that says it's subject to approval by the town engineer of a compliant recharge system. Yes, we do. I okay. think we should. I think we right. should. Mm -hmm. uh, conditional yeah, on that. And I think probably the three criteria we have in regards to the foundation system and the, uh, I, I would suspect they're going to have to yeah. get an occupancy permit, et cetera, yeah. on that. You want me to read those all? I can do that if I find them. Sure. All right. You got them? Uh, also, subject to the following conditions, uh, the petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and propose foundation plans prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. Also, the petitioner's final construction plans for the new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector, along with the as-built foundation plans prior to the issuance of a building permit. And also, the petitioner shall submit as-built plans to the building inspector showing completed the completed construction immediately after the work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Okay. Go ahead, John. Uh, si, would you uh, want to possibly amend your application, your uh, motion, yeah. to uh, grant to Stephen Developus, Developus? Um, because that's who we're awarding it to, rather than uh, we can to do Brady. That. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Shall we refer to him as the petitioner? Yeah, it should be granted to the to the property, owner, the property, property owner. owner. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Done. Point. And procedurally, uh, as the petition does ask for, even though the applicant has. Uh, Claim to, to is claiming to work with the engineer. The petition does ask for a, a variance from the Act for Protection District. The notice does. So uh, I think the way we've done this before is included in our decision perhaps a second vote uh, where the applicant withdraws their request for a variance under. Uh, that section and we can include it probably within the same write-up if mm -hmm. I'm recalling correctly just to, to, to save it to make it um, read right so that procedurally it doesn't get confusing when somebody reads the application for relief and then the decision uh, but I think let's maybe let's do one vote at a time uh, and size made a motion so before we get a second on that, to, to plain English what I just said to you, we're going to vote on the motion that he's just made, mm -hmm. size just made, uh, with all the conditions which include the aquifer protection compliance and the criteria regarding permitting and such. Mm -hmm. uh, vote on that. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is, based upon your discussion and presentation, you're no longer seeking a variance with regard to compliance with the uh, impervious cover uh, and, and um, uh, dimensional, uh, well, compliance with uh, the Act for Protection District. Yes, sir, yeah. So uh, we will then ask you if you want to request a withdrawal uh, of that aspect of the application, and we will vote on that separately. Uh, but combine them all together once we uh, once we write it all up. Okay. That makes sense to you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Makes sense to us here? Well, I, that's consistent with the building inspector's uh, modification of his uh, letter. I well, think the reason why he modified it to begin with is because the application really does not ask for uh, variance for the, from the aquifer. His original letter did... In, and that's why I believe it was advertised. The, in that the, the advertised area. legal notice. Yeah, I no, I know into, that. That I read into the record. So, yeah. which was based upon your original ac application, does request a variance from the um, lot coverage aspect of the aquifer protection district. And then it was amended. Uh, okay. And and it never got to us as an amendment. Gotcha. So the and it was never published. Gotcha. Uh, okay. As as an amendment by the town. No, I, so. I and I completely, 
we're going to accomplish what you want to accomplish, but procedurally, I don't want to jam the homeowner up. Yeah, no, I In understand. the future, should there be any question as to what relief was requested versus what relief was granted. Gotcha. No okay? Problem. Yep. Presuming it's granted. Absolutely. All right. Uh, so uh, we have a motion made by side. Do we have a second? Second. Robert, second. Any discussion on the motion made by Cy? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. All those in favor of the application? Five zero zero. Your application for a variance with regard to the uh, rear yard setback is granted. Thank you very much. Uh, based going on forward on our uh, conversation just a minute ago, uh, because the hearing notice has Relief, at request relief from the uh, Aquifer Protection District coverage. Would you like to withdraw that? I would. Okay. Sai, uh, since you're going to be um, writing up the variance, perhaps it makes sense for you to make a quick motion to approve the withdrawal? I would move to grant the petitioner a withdrawal of his application for a variance uh, the, to the requirement for aquifer protection so it would be uh, of his request for a variance to exceed the lot coverage right. permitted in an right. aquifer protection district under section 10331 I right okay so moved so moved <laughs> do we have a second a second uh, Robert okay. all right any further discussion on the withdrawal hearing none all those in favor Five zero zero. That's granted as well. Thank you. Your variance is granted. Don't go anywhere. Okay. I'm going to stamp the plans and drawings that you've submitted that you will include with the decision of this board um, and record it. Yep, absolutely. With the uh, with the plans that I'm going to stamp. Okay. All set. Uh, we have 14 days to present the decision to the town clerk. Uh, there's a 20 day period of appeal for any aggrieved party to appeal that decision. Um, so you might come back in maybe a little over a month, 35 days or so. Uh, keep in touch with town staff. They'll let you know when it's when it's ready for you to pick up. All right? Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks for your patience while Thank we you try to get it right. Everything. I appreciate it. All right, here, here you go. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. All right, good night. All right, good evening. Sorry to make sure you have one. No worries, that's what we're here for. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Good night. We um, we did have on the agenda tonight a uh, review of minutes, but we're going to table that review uh, until Kristen has a chance to uh, punch them up a little bit after she 
reviews the tape. Uh, so we'll do that maybe at the next meeting or whenever Kristen tells us she's ready. Right. <laughs> Uh, that said, there's nothing else on the agenda, so we'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Um, Robert, second. John, all those in favor? We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Christian.